in the team is to merge and implement some of our research strategies into actual um, uh, more traditional built architectural work. So you know, just kind of a flavor of, of who we work with. Um, but I think more relevant maybe for this conversation uh, discussion is our studio's position within the research division of Autodesk. Um, and that really allow, and so, I mean, that's for a number of reasons, but that really allows our small team to have a greater reach uh, through collaborations with other research labs, looking at things like robotics, AI, digital twins. Um, and these other labs are all located, you know, across North America, Europe. Um, so we already have this kind of precedent for remote research collaboration. Um, and I think part of that's based on the time scale that we look at. You know, we both have project time scales, which are a lot shorter, and we have kind of research tracks that are more consistent and ongoing. And we have, you know, we have a means in place to, to Zoom calls, to collaborate, to, you know, use Slack and Zoom tools to get that. Um, but this is really how, you know, I, I see my colleagues now, right? Everything, everything is a grid. Um, and so, but in, in general, the transition to work from home from a technical standpoint, that was not like overtly difficult. Like I mentioned, we're often uh, off the way, traveling at school, remote. Um, so we, we really already have kind of the infrastructure in place for meeting virtually. Um, you know, we all have laptops, not desktop computers, things like that. Um, but I think, you know, it's worth mentioning that as someone who, you know, goes to the grocery store and lives near a hospital, um, I know a lot of people don't have the luxury of working from home. So it, it, it's certainly a privilege to have that opportunity. But I really think the difference for our team right now is just acknowledging that, that all of us are experiencing, you know, higher levels of stress and anxiety about everything in the world. And Autodesk has been, you know, very um, forward and generous about um, acknowledging that and, you know, understanding that it's normal and acceptable that our product productivity is not going to be what it once was. Uh, we do have obligations to our clients, um, but we really made it a point, like from the beginning to clarify that our primary goal right now is the health and wellness of our team and our families. And that includes, and so kind of the way we go through that just from like a, a standard is uh, we have daily kind of 15 minute check-ins. Um, we, we post on Slack every day about what we're working on for the day. Uh, we have BYOB happy hours twice a week where we don't talk about anything uh, work related. Um, and, you know, really just kind of an understanding that with children or other obligations, people might be working at different times, right? So at night, uh, whenever they can. So, so our schedule has shifted a lot. It's a little looser. Um, I guess just to wrap up, as far as lessons learned, I personally had um, success schedule, scheduling uh, most work Zoom calls, bigger work Zoom calls on things like meetings, project collaborations, uh, typically on Tuesday, Thursdays, uh, then leaving Monday and Wednesday and some of Friday open for more solitary design and research work. Um, I think it, you know, it makes these kind of Zoom days very tedious and just completely exhausting. Um, but this could be a future model maybe for how we collaborate in person in the office on certain days and then have defined like work from home uh, days on other days. Um, and I guess lastly, you know, there's some question about how we can turn this into an opportunity. Um, and I really hope it leads to, to us in the AEC industry thinking more deeply about how we manage projects from a schedule and budget standpoint and really put the focus, uh, you know, shift the focus away from simple metrics around what we perceive as productivity, uh, but rather shift the balance back toward how we treat our, our colleagues and our employees. And, you know, like an ADR work week is not, you know, better than, you know, a work-life balance. So um, hopefully that's something that can maybe come out of this, uh, this work from home stress test. But yep, that's what I got. I'll stop sharing. Thank you. Um, by the way, I apologize because my internet just cut off. Something that has never happened before happened right now. <laughs> um, so um, I'm glad this is going on. Um, so I think the next speaker will be Jose. Am yes, right? of course. Perfect. Jose, tell us about, yeah. Want to share my screen? Yes, please go ahead. So, hello everyone. I'm Jose Miguel Armijo. I've been uh, uh, I've been with Parkinson 
Man since the last six years, and Ferguson Man is, is a medium to large firm with 900 uh, to 1,000 employees globally. And uh, I started in New York six, six years ago, and, and then I transferred to Dubai for a couple of years. And when I come back, I started to think about how um, our, our firm could um, enhance the digital skills. So we start thinking about how to create the data unit. The data unit is a, is a community about scripting in different areas. And our mandate is to, is to improve design uh, and also improve efficiency. So with these two uh, ideas, we, we started this uh, two years ago. And, and we concentrated in four like goals that is first create a community, then go to education and events to, to put the world out, out there, to create workflows and research different uh, workflows for, for different vendors like Autodesk is here or, or Rhino or Urban Footprint or GIS, etc. And then start to collaborate more and put everything that we learn into a central depository way that you can uh, share with everyone across the firm because uh, with 900 different employees in 16 different offices in seven uh, different countries, you need to create a system like a web that, that can uh, help everyone uh, have access to this content. So in the data unit, we try to uh, we start finding people that are uh, savvy in different in these different tools and they become the ambassadors or the leads in different uh, studios and we also have users that we are like casually using our tools or engaging in different events and right now you can see that we have in new york is mostly because we have the the biggest office here but you can see that in 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 the different offices uh, we have different people number of people um, and we've been doing a lot of trainings in different tools and uh, in scripting, but everything that happened at the end is, is to create a community, a community that can relate to each other and to have a, a, a spirit of collaboration. And we, before this pandemic, we were doing hackathons and trainings, and we wanted to continue doing this. And probably uh, the format that we're going to embrace now is, is kind of like this. It's a, it's a, it's a group of people talking into a camera, but still we want to um, continue collaborating doing this. We have these different events where we uh, we can talk with uh, in, in in with 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 different offices, and we we do really embrace this spirit of community because we we thought that um, these tools are available everywhere. But the most important part is, is, um, is recommend uh, year by year and, and help improve the difference. So um, to close a little bit about the working from home, I've been personally been uh, handling this, uh, the data unit with Gustavo Pardo, you can see here in, in the picture. And since I had to work remotely with different uh, offices. Uh, I've been working from home be from before, but especially going also going to the office and and from the more um, in deep um, research. Uh, what what I can see that is happening too is that these tools on scripting like um, will will become like the main tool for architects in the future because. If you start working remotely, you, you have to resolve design decisions by sometime by yourself uh, because uh, you will have more isolation time. So, uh, for instance, if you want to uh, go and work in a, in, a, in, a, in a sustainability, you will have to tag into different scripts that can do the automation radiation analysis or um, if you want to rewrite different um, scenarios for, for your plan, you will also will need to be uh, able to do that. 
uh, by yourself or with two or three more members of your team. Uh, so this reduction in, in, in the amount of um, actions per minute will be super important in the future. Very nice, thank you. Um, I think we have Daniel first. Yeah. Yeah, Daniel. My screen. Um, so, hey everyone, my name is Daniel. Uh, it's good to be here. Thanks, Nick, for inviting me. Um, let me share with you guys a couple things. So, I've had a kind of an interesting experience because I actually started a new job um, right when everything sort of started. Um, I've been for the past three weeks, the CTO of Deluxe Modular. And uh, my first week of work was basically the first week that everyone went home. Um, so that's definitely been an interesting experience um, and it's come with some uh, challenges, of course. Um, but I think also some, some interesting kind of uh, opportunities. And uh, so I think there's definitely like a good and a bad side to it. Um, so Deluxe Modular uh, is a modular construction company and um, we have a number of different locations and um, throughout this whole crisis, we're actually open for business. So you can see here our website now um, auto forward to a new product that we launched just in the last few weeks, which is a modular um, medical unit, ICU. Um, so a number of modular construction companies have actually sort of uh, made this big push and effort to uh, uh, transition their production capacities to, you know, providing products like this that solve like a real need uh, in our communities. And uh, we're open for business. We actually got a letter of waiver from um, the governor of Pennsylvania to keep operating our production facility um, as a provider and manufacturer of uh, essential goods and services for the life and safety uh, of people. Uh, so we are open for business. Uh, we have a, a production facility in Berwick, Pennsylvania, um, which staffs about 50 people on the production line. And we have a corporate office in New York City of about 25 people, uh, which has been working remote for the last three weeks. Um, we also have an affiliate in Ukraine that I've been working with very closely um, of about 120 people who are uh, BIM uh, designers and engineers, and they do all of our kind of design engineering work that we do in-house. Um, so my experience, you know, it's been tough. Um, I, um, you know, I decided to join Deluxe some months ago, so I did have a chance to see the office in New York and meet a few people in person. But since really starting and really being at the leadership level, it's been tough to not be able to meet people face to face, especially people that are working, uh, you know, on my team. I haven't had a chance to go to our production facility at all. So even though my job is around like uh, developing technology and setting the, the vision for our technology development, um, a lot of that involves our production facilities and how we imagine sort of automating uh, that production process into the future. I haven't been able to actually like see and look and touch and, and experience all the stuff that goes on. Um, so that's definitely been a challenge. On the other hand, um, you know, uh, as a few people have already mentioned, and I've heard from a lot of my friends um, who, who work remotely, uh, you know, part-time or worked remotely for teams that um, didn't work remotely in general. Um, in a way, this has been a kind of a great leveler where everybody's been forced to learn uh, these technologies. And I think it has become a bit easier. And I think people are very resilient, so people will learn and adapt uh, to using tools you know uh, fairly quickly um, one thing I also wanted to mention aside from from my job um, you know I'm teaching at university and right now I have a class at both Columbia which is a kind of um, computational design class with uh, 45 students I think working in 12 groups um, and I'm, I'm doing a class at Pratt about uh, AR and and so those classes started before this happened obviously and we had to transition um, and that's been an interesting experience as well. Also, uh, good and bad things. Specifically, like the Pratt class is an AR class. So we started the course with like all the hardware, the iPhones, the whatevers, um, you know, with, with the idea of the project being a final exhibit where people have the AR and they can sort of have the spatial experience. Obviously, we had to reframe a lot of that. And now, we, you know, we're back to sort of like making videos and demos and sharing them through video. Um, but in terms of the design work and the collaboration, it's, it's actually been really interesting and a lot of it has worked out really well. Um, 
So for example, in the Pratt class, you know, we're doing digital pinups, you can see here. And in that class, we have three professors and 24 students. And for the first time, we're actually able to very quickly give design feedback uh, in a very collaborative way between the three professors. Um, so the students just put up their PDFs. And, you know, I was thinking about this the other day, like before we, you know, we sit in the room, we have a giant projector and people project their images. And then the professors would kind of like gesture, you know, saying like, why don't you do this, do this, like, you know what I mean? And it would take a while to communicate. And now, you know, we can collaboratively like in Zoom with the annotation tool, just sketch, you know, together, um, whatever we're thinking, and then save those images out and then I'll share them with the class. And also, you know, for my technical classes, it's really helpful to kind of explain algorithms to show people uh, where different tools are. And also, you know, you can take over the screen and actually get into the grasshopper for them in a way that would take a really long time to physically like have everyone bring their laptops, et cetera. Um, yeah, so for me, it's been an interesting experience and uh, definitely uh, pluses and minuses. Um, I do hope that we can return to being social soon. I think that's an important part of design and, and leadership as well. Um, but I do think that things won't quite go back to being the same. I think a lot of people are sort of confronting this reality now and seeing some advantages to it that I think what we'll, ha what we'll have after we come out of this is sort of like a hybrid where maybe companies will be a little bit more open to the idea of work from home and instituting those kind of policies. And like John was saying, maybe, you know, thinking of a way to create a hybrid model where part of the week or part of the day you spend like intensely collaborating in person and part of the week you maybe spend on your own and part of the week you maybe spend doing like remote collaboration. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to answer any other questions you guys may have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. I think you summarized very well, uh, you know, the benefits to explore during this time, especially getting involved in a process of remote sharing where you can't control one person's uh, mouse, basically, and then you can actually show them how to do things. That's, that's how we have been working. And that makes us feel like we are right there with the person trying to figure out, and I do something and another person does something else. That's really not has been a block per se, but it has been enabler. In a, in a different way. So it has been interesting to explore that. Um, so everyone, you know, you can shoot your questions in the chat. I'm happy to, um, uh, you know, pass those questions to our speakers. If, if you have any, please feel free to do that. But I think it's okay to also have you talk as well. Um, you know, there is 50 of us um, on the call. Um, let us know. Uh, if not, I will just shoot away some additional questions in the meantime. Um, so one question I have is actually now that we are going through this changing how we use technology and or how we work is being changed and adoption of that is, I assume, is much easier for junior staff versus senior staff and, you know, the managerial position, the things that they have to do versus uh, you know, a, what a designer has to do. Um, with that, do you guys see any change or need of change in staffing needs, skill sets that, you know, companies need that you became aware of during this time? Um, anything to speak to that? I mean, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. so you mentioned about scripting, so that's an important part. Yeah, I mean, the, f the first... So in Pergisisma, we have uh, uh, offices in many countries, no, and offices in Asia. And when this happens, in back in February, uh, we have to close that office first. So that became like a the beta tester for everything that will happen after in the other offices. Uh, so we realized that for making this efficient for everyone, we need to find different channels. So if you're working in big models. And in, in, in beam or, or parametric, you have to use cloud boxes. You don't have, you don't, you, you don't, you don't go to BPM. BPM is mostly for management tools, for PDF, for, for doing things that were less uh, megabyte uh, consuming. So you need to start thinking that the, we, we need to share resources like the, the web, something that w all of, Humanity share, even you know that even in YouTube on this kind of 
uh, or Netflix, they are thinking about going uh, down with the with the high quality to the like regular quality because now everyone is getting uh, their content web based. So that was the first, and the second is is what I was saying that you need to start uh, investing, learning some some new tools or like we were showing these pictures of uh, Grasshopper, Dynamo, and all of these tools that can help you enhance your efficiency. But also, I think there's a good possibility for innovation here because when you start crossing skills like parametric modeling with sustainability, with data mining, with programming, you start seeing that there's more possibility for innovation, no? This new new world we are, we are looking at. Any other thoughts, guys? Just to jump in really quick, I think one of my experiences has been with like working with some some junior staff is that it really, you know, we can no longer have just a quick like, hey, what are you working on? Or think about this. Like we can't have quick conversations anymore. And so like an email takes up time, Slack takes up time. So, I mean, one of the things that's been really valuable is, is like kind of pushing everyone to take their own initiative around things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like we can't, like I can't, no one can prescribe like everything you need to do during the day. And so it's like we have goals and how people achieve those goals is a little more open-ended now. And I think it's a great opportunity to, you know, expand the realm of possibility and, and kind of see like we don't have to have a heavy hand in managing, but rather like let there be a little freedom to explore and let, again, like let the, let the team like kind of take their initiative around some of these problems that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's interesting that like, you know, whatever job still existed where it, your measure of like how much work you do is like the physical time you're in the office has all of a sudden, you know, disappeared. Um, and like jobs that involve that kind of oversight can no longer have that kind of oversight. So I think that's, that hasn't been an issue for us. And like a lot of, I think, creative offices were already not functioning that way. I mean, it's not really about showing up and punching the clock. Um, it's more about like meeting certain goals and accomplishments. Um, but yeah, in other fields, I think it's a pretty big change, right? That like, that you can no longer sort of, uh, you know, require people to sort of sit at their desk for, for its own sake. Um, so I think that will affect a lot of other industries. Mm -hmm. um, so actually there's a question relating to that. Let me bring that up to see um, is that something we can respond. What do we think is, what do we think is replacing those short conversations now and possibly for the long term? That's from Adrian Rodriguez. Do you guys see the question? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we can see okay. Um, I think like the informal Zoom meetings are really interesting. Um, like not relating to work, I've, you know, I've been having some like hangouts with groups of friends and things. And like, that's kind of weird. Um, I don't know if I like it that much. Like, um, I actually like think the working stuff has been pretty easy, but the social stuff is very hard. Um, you know, because there's weird silences. You can't like have the physical contact. You ha can't, you know, you do like remote drinking or whatever. It's not the same, you know. Um, but one thing is interesting is like, um, you know, for example, I, I hung out with two friends that are both in New York and we, we had like, you know, every other week we get together and now we do it on Zoom and that's kind of a replacement. But like, for example, my wife, she met up with her high school friends uh, on Zoom and that's kind of different because like they all live in different parts of the world. And so that's actually a new social event before they'd always be texting, but they're never hanging out physically. And now they're actually on Zoom, which is something they never did before. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if that answers the question, but like in terms of just informal short conversations, it is becoming a lot more formal. Like you can't even do it with your friends, like, you know, just say hi, you have to sort of set up a time, you block it out on your calendar. And I think it's kind of weird. Yeah, I definitely think that that social aspect is something that we, we haven't figured out yet. Um, and it's a, a big question, certainly in our minds, is, is how do you recreate that? Um, I have guesses that, you know, looking at social media, looking at how I interact in short interactions with people from other firms through LinkedIn posts or through Facebook messages, 
you know, establishing a system like that where it's it's a communal wiki or a communal page, people sort of throw up, here's this cool thing that I did, here's a project I'm working on and, and trying to make it a little open and free form. Something along those lines, but you know, it's not at the same time, it's still it's sort of a work situation and it's not social media. Um, and so trying to to navigate the, that that blurred realm is something that uh, will be interesting to see. Yeah, I think those are really interesting points. And it, it's like, I was recently, we had to give a, a kind of interview for a, an academic job uh, a few days ago. Um, and we were presenting the work, you know, to like 20 facilities people and it's on a Zoom call, right? And so all of the things that you're trained like as an architect to, to do while you're presenting, like maintain eye contact, body, like body language, like you can't really do that anymore. And so I think in a way it's shifting toward how you like verbally communicate mm -hmm. and how your verbal communication is related to the image on the screen, right? So it becomes less about maybe, you know, me personally and rather like what is being presented and, and how I, I craft a narrative around the image. And it, again, it's like less of the personal like one-on-one -on -one. and like, yeah, getting to what Dan was saying, it's like super weird to schedule a Zoom call with my brother, like that's just weird. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's kind of moving off to like more formal in a lot of ways, maybe um, more scripted, um, like, like you're mentioning. That's a really good point because speaking skills becomes really valuable. And also the voice that you are using becomes really valuable. I, I realized with my team, you know, I, you understand better someone can represent or presents their ideas clearly and, um, better it you know takes takes the lead most of the time so with that i have an additional question you know what we do is sometimes we have our whatsapp call and we i can call my team anytime as if they are right next to me asking something i, I see something on the screen we share screen and sometimes the share screen stays on one uh, uh, on one of my screen and i continue another one we still interact and i can still call say oh hey i saw you did it did that, but can you try this another way? So are you guys open to having that phone calls whenever, as if you're in the office? You think is that, would that be distracting more than helpful? I think something like that. Uh, we use Slack in that way. So we don't really call each other, but you know, anytime anyone can sort of Slack. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I, I think the chats also are, you can organize uh, like a more informal chat and everyone posts like everything that they're happening in their homes, like set their, their setting for like from their houses or, and, and there's other channels for doing more formal work. So in, in a way they're, they're trying to address that this uh, informality for our side too. Yeah, I think uh, John, I think it was John also mentioned, and we're doing a similar thing where there's sort of some days of the week that we're trying to reserve for leave people alone, let them work, and other days where it's a little bit more, you know, these are the days to to reach out for those quick things. Um, and I, I think you know people keep asking, you know, what's going to happen in the future? Are we going to go back to what it was before? And, and I think everyone here has, has sort of said something along the lines of partially we'll go back, but partially we won't. And so that sort of system of whatever, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays or whatever it is for your office are the work from home days or the leave people alone days and the Monday, Wednesday are the share, see what's going on, reach out days. Um, that feels to me like something that ha a lot of different people are sort of realizing the same system. So it feels like there's something there. Perfect. I'm scanning through the questions and you guys can do to see if there's something interests you. But, um, you know, there is uh, Peter from Vienna and he's asking if this is going to be a short time to adjust or if this is something that we have to get ready for a, a remote work or virtual reality of the future. Um, I think we said that, you know, this is never going to be going back to normal as it was before. Um, there will be certain um, flexibility to working from home as we are testing, maybe it is more effective than us traveling every day to an office and then spending that an hour one way and another hour 
coming back and that two hours maybe could be used for personal needs or for the projects. Um, so if you guys want to respond to that as, in addition to that. I think work from home was, was already growing. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, was, it was going to happen regardless. It's now going to happen a lot faster. I don't think we're going back. I, I think we're, you know, it'll be a hybrid situation at some point. It'll be like this for a while, but when it stops being like this, it'll slowly turn into a hybrid, but it, it's, yeah, there's always going to be, there's, there's room for having people in an office somewhere, but there's always going to be, from this point forward, a large percentage of people working remotely at any given time, I think. Yes. And I think the workspace also will, will, will adjust to this with more meeting, uh, meeting rooms and less like, or more shares, share desk. Probably the materiality of this shared desk will change too. Um, because uh, at the end, you want to provide like a safe safe space for everyone to meet. So all of this will, will take in consideration <coughs> now. So you will happen to, to, to work with these new directives on how to keep your employees safe and, um, and I agree to, it will be a hybrid between uh, staying at home and working in, and going to a safe environment to, to do more in face, um, face to face uh, meetings or workshops. Yeah. So there's another good question I see here, and I wanted to ask all of you actually at the beginning is uh, from Aditya. She is asking, um, what are you guys doing personally in order to keep being productive given all the distractions that come from working home? Do you guys have any um, schedule that you, you keep specific to yourself, like waking up super early or like working at night time? Does this flexibility help you with your productivity? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's important to have a dedicated space for sure, if you can. Um, I'm kind of lucky that like also weird timing, we moved from a 400 square foot apartment in Manhattan to a house in New Jersey like a month before all this happened. Um, so we're lucky we each have like an office, like a room that's uh, our own offices. Um, but it, you know, whatever you can do to have a dedicated space, I think is very important and stick to a schedule. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, it depends on your company, like in my company, um, the leadership, we have a phone call every single day at 730 um, to sync up and uh, there's 12 people and everybody shows up every day. And that's how you start the day. So my schedule has actually weirdly become a lot more regular and I don't know if it's because of my new job or, or what, but I'm waking up a lot more on schedule than I even used to and I'm showing up to work actually uh, just you know, more at the same time every day than I used to. So. So, yeah, I've been uh, working remotely since last August, uh, and so definitely the at first having that rigorous schedule, I actually started waking up earlier than I, I woke up when I was working, uh, and I sort of, you know, gave myself fixed hours, absolutely having that dedicated space, um, all of that felt very important. It was important in order for, for me to maintain productivity and, and sort of get used to the situation. I, I have found, um, and I, I think you know, your experiences are all individual and will vary. But but personally, having done it for eight months, within the past two months or so, I'd say I found more and more I'm I'm varying from that schedule. Um, I'm still sort of trying to maintain the same wake up time. But you know, there's some mornings where I just don't feel productive and. Mm -hmm it's better, you know, that's the time that I'll go do my grocery shopping. And then that night I'll come back and I'll, I'll get work done. Uh, and, and I think it took time for me to sort of figure out when I was productive and when I wasn't productive and, and how to, to manage that. But it, it is shifting and, uh, you know, I, I'm assuming how I work will continue to shift as the more that I'm, I'm doing this. I, for, for me, this is like my second quarantine. My first one was in Chile when I was doing my master thesis in parametrics. And, and I'm trying to follow the, the, the same like uh, strategy to, to start looking to the data, how I'm using my hours in a day so we can make like a, okay, this, this chunk of time, I will be doing more like deep work, more, more working towards like scripting or or those and these other chunks that 
when people are awake, they're more into uh, meetings and, and, and reaching out and do the, the emails and everything. So it depends on everyone. I mean, there, everyone has a different model, but I think that the important, my recommendation will be like, be conscious about your, your, your model and try to work that with your company so they can um, be linked together in those spaces when you need to reach out to everyone else. Yeah, I think those are all like really great points and maybe, you know, kind of what Chris was mentioning. I think it's, it's both like schedule and, and balance, but also I think, you know, just little things like, you know, getting outside, enjoying some sunshine, like being safe, um, trying to eat healthy, like I know that's a challenge, but you know, uh, again, I think it's I think it's just an acknowledgement that productivity is not like necessarily the end all be all. Like we have, like I said, we have client um, obligations, we have sketches that we need to do, but just like the driving factor of like we have to be productive. If you're not like you know, nine hours of this day, I wasn't productive. Like I did a bad job. Like I think we. I think that's just something that needs to shift. And I think that's something that can shift like longer term about our relationship to work. Um, and that's something like I would like to see like potentially happen. Yeah, I, I, I agree that. Um, my girlfriend leads, uh, uh, has a, uh, uh, really talking points about this. In, he has a, a beautiful uh, enterprise that she talks about how you don't have to push yourself and and uh, and be the most efficient because uh, we're crossing like a really uh, important and difficult times right now. You you want it to be the most efficient that you can be, but uh, there's a certain point too. You 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 don't have to do everything at the same time, and and because of that, we have a technology that help you now. So. We're in survival mode right now. Uh, I want to read one more question, but before that, um, do you guys find yourself working longer hours working from home? I guess not. <laughs> longer hours, but I don't know if it's because of work from home. <laughs> okay. Okay. I was talking to a couple of friends and we have a hard time stopping ourselves when it's time to stop working because when you're in office, you want to go home, so that's your time to leave. But when you're home, you know, whenever you work, anytime you have free time, basically. So last question I have is from our friend David Brown. So he's asking, what's been the best tool for collaboration? We are testing whiteboard for collaborative sketching, beam track for Revit review and communication, Teams for VC, and more traditional email back and forth with Bluebeam, Morfolio, Trace Sketches, et cetera. What, what's worked best for you guys? Any specific tools? Zoom. <laughs> In addition to Zoom. <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, Dave put together like a great list. So I think that's something we could all like learn from. Um, I have a project right now in kind of concept design. I don't, I don't have anything in construction right now. Um, so meeting with the client, you know, we set up kind of weekly client meetings um, and it has been different. We show, I kind of show um, like not drawings, but more like concept sketches. And then, yeah, we collabor collaboratively sketch over in Zoom. Uh, I use my iPad with a pen, which I actually kind of really liked. Um, and I can kind of trace out ideas like real time. I, I found that actually really helpful. And I think that's something that, you know, can definitely be used um, moving forward. Mm -hmm. We're looking into platforms. Uh, we're researching platform too because, yeah, uh, Skype or Zoom, you can share your screen. That's good. But if you can have a, a model in the cloud that everyone can can log into query and everything. So there's different tools in the market right now. One is uh, Autodesk. After uh, an exciting one is Forge, no? Uh, and there's other that like, you. I'm using a lot of Power BI that you can report into the, and send a link and people can interact with that. So this kind of interactions with something, uh, it would be super appreciated. 
because at the end you want to your your client or your coworker to be able to dig into the model and and see things that maybe you are not seeing. So this kind of cloud services is is something that's super important right now. Okay, I think with that we can wrap this meeting up. Um, I want to mention everyone that this is the first one of min series to come. So this conversation is not going to stop. We will continue with this for sure. Um, please stay con connected with us and let us know your questions, you know, the issues that you're coming across, the topics that you want us to discuss and or the speakers that you want us to invite. Let us know. Um, we really think that this is an opportunity for us to learn collectively. And you know we learn from each other, but you know we also support each other, knowing that you know how everyone else doing well is motivational for for those who are struggling right now, especially. But it's totally normal. It takes everyone some time to get used to working from home, and especially in the circumstances of you know you have the kids at home maybe or you don't have set up. Uh, but from now on, it, it will be much easier for everyone. Um, so with that, thank you to our speakers. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate accepting to join us uh, for a short notice. Thank you to Nicholas and Aisu for putting this together real quickly. Um, and I don't, I, I don't know if Devon is here, but thank you for Devon to help us uh, organizing this event as well. Um, with that, I will be ending this meeting and we will post this on YouTube sometime soon. Um, for those who, who may have missed it. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.